The undefeated Errol The Truth Spence Jr. He is the current reigning unified IBC and WBC welterweight champion and one of, if not the best, welterweight boxers in the world. With his impressive record, impeccable offensive fighting style, and devastating punches, it's no surprise that many believe he may have what it takes to defeat the unstoppable Manny Pacquiao in August this year. Today, we're going to take a look at the times Errol Spence Jr. destroyed his opponent. Welcome to Boxing Matrix. Enjoy this video. With 27,000 fans in attendance, Kell Brook lost his IBF welterweight title after an 11th round stoppage. Brook worked the counter well, but Spence was quick to return throwing many power shots to the head and more to the body, ultimately wearing down Brooke and damaging his left eye, forcing him to take a knee. And when he's in close, you can see that strength. Good right. shot there from Spence and the body. Against the experience of the 31-year-old. Good shot from Spence and a lovely oh, Brooke and his team. Oh, big shot from Errol Spence Jr. Kell Brook hurt there, let's not forget, he's a big... Errol Spence Jr. is the one who's had much more success in the last few minutes. Oh, Kell Brook's hurt here, and he's down in the 10th round, and it's so early! Unfortunately for Kell Brook, this is desperate time, he's badly injured now with that eye, and here comes Spence again. Errol Spence Jr. on the verge of the coronation, Kell Brook tottering all over the ring, he's going to be taken out! Champion. And here comes Spenzo after that minute rest. Yeah, the confidence back against Golovkin. The eye against Errol Spence, but he's gone down. I think he's going to sit it out. It is all over. And Errol Spence Jr. from the Lone Star State is a new star. In 2014, Spence defeated Francisco Javier Castro in the fifth round via TKO. Castro was definitely not a match for Spence, as he managed to block almost every punch Spence threw at him with his face, while barely being able to return even a fraction of the onslaught he was taking. A spectator can even be heard saying, Castro's plan is just to hope Errol gets tired of hitting him. Five, the last round of the fight. And at this point, Spence was landing single shots, but everything landing, he gets his man in trouble, he backs him up. He backs him to the ropes. Now watch Bird come in, the referee. And you see Bird say, Got to show yourself something. And sure enough, Castro threw enough punches to extend the beating another minute or so. This is the end of the fight in super slow-mo. Look at these shots. Oh. oh, that left uppercut. Well, that was enough. Yeah, that was about as brutal a punch as Spence had landed the whole fight, and that convinced Bird finally to call it a, a, a day. In July of 2013, Spence knocked Eddie Cordova with a powerful body shot to the liver, securing a victory in the first round and making his third professional win by KO. Got very good mechanics. Something to keep in mind as well as you could. And Harry digs that left hand to the ball. This first round. Spence coming forward. Cordova trying to figure out a way to keep Spence off. There's that left hook to the ball. That's what we were talking about. That body is nine. He's not going to make it. Ten and out. In September 2019, Spence dropped Sean Porter in the 11th round and unified the WBC and IBC welterweight titles in a split decision. Away we go. Schedule for 30 seconds remaining in round one. Schedule for 12. Well, Spence. 
tell you, this is an incredible action fight right now. Oh, both guys are feeling them, but I can see him breathing kind of heavy. Oh, and he, oh big left. And, Beautiful round. And here, and here was Spencer hand, Spence hand. He comes back with. Oh, Spence caught corner with a right. Oh. Corner oh. coming right back. Whoever didn't tune into this fight. One minute remaining in low. Oh! 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 Spence said that's what he wanted to do. Don Porter was in the middle of a. Spence versus Chris Van Heerden. In September of 2015, Van Heerden was brutalized by Spencer's devastating combination of shots to the head and body. His mugging at Spence's attacks did not go unpunished, and in the end, Van Heerden is out mugged well, in return, right now. securing Spence an eight round TKO victory. Now. Anything significant, but it seems like Van Horn is swelling. Could have read this. Just hands high. Solid last spot. Yeah, now he can land some power. 30 and 2, uh, former multiple world champ on that eye. And what makes that jab so effective is even when you're setting up, you have to start. Spence felt something there as they, after the break for the mouthpiece, he won. But now he can only lay up against the ropes. This seems like it could be a matter of time. And you know what? That's enough. After shaking off Phil LoGreco's flurry of attacks in the first, Spence began to step on the gas in the second round and unleashed several hard body shots that slowed LoGreco down. 35 seconds into round three, Spence dropped LoGreco with a right hand to the side of the head. Spence then pinned LoGreco on the ropes, firing at will, forcing referee Robert Byrd to stop the fight. Those shots break those hands down. Nice shot, plant them. Great point, Ray, those uppercut because of those body shots. And now going to the head, successful. As we've talked about earlier, back in May of 2013. Really, uh, you know, making us believers tonight with those body shots. On balance, good leverage, great shots in the mid section. Yeah, that beginning to take its toll. Yeah, he gets set from his amateur background, knowing exactly how to execute a punch, to deliver the proper punch, to stay on balance. This is out of them. Uh, oh, oh, down goes. Put them together quite well. Body shots, head shots, all inside. And again, Spence to the head. Lots of time remaining. Two minutes, understandably. Spence is not rushing. He's taking his time. He's picking his shots. Very impressive. You know, this is what we talked about yesterday. Everybody said, who is Spence Vaughn? Uh, you know, who is he beat? And as he moves up in opposition, you're... Coming up on a minute to go in this third round. It's all Spence and it's all over. In April of 2016, Spence earned himself a fifth round TKO victory against Chris Algieri. Spence dropped Algieri three times during the fight. Spence defended his IBF welterweight for the fourth time against Mikey Garcia in 2019 and won via unanimous decision. Spence dominated the fight, showing off his powerful jab and mixing up shots to the head and body. His smart footwork kept Garcia off balance for the entire fight. The ring which is supposed to. A look at the number of jabs landed. 21 for Spence, 11 oh. by Garcia. Yeah, the telling blows right now are by Spence with his left hand. It's, Absolutely. He's definitely getting through with it and is in his, and stiff. He needs to move his head a little bit more. 
He's keeping the perfect distance, Errol Spence. And now he's starting to land some really hard shots. And if Mikey can't land and hurt Errol, he's really in deep trouble. Body shots, 31-7 in favor of Spence. Yeah, taking up all the time on your left hook side. You know what I mean? Boy, boy, Errol Spence is just dominating now. Attempt on here, and I'm talking about Michael Garcia taking that type of punishment. Especially risky because you're in there with a... Mikey Garcia needs to knock out Errol Spence to win this fight. Of course. But right now he's too busy protecting himself from this onslaught of Errol Spence's combinations. He is. He's doing a good job of blocking these big... 11. The truth. Errol Spence Jr. Spence dominated Alejandro Barrera for four rounds before finishing him off in the fifth. He worked his powerful jab and broke down Barrera immediately in round one. In round five, Barrera was knocked down with a heavy right hook to the body, and although he beat the count, Spence hammered away at him until referee Lawrence Cole stepped in and stopped the bout. Now Spence trying to settle down, lands a good right hook and he drilled Barrera with that one. You see Spence comes in, he lands that straight left, and there's the right hook that snaps back the head of Barrera. He's, oh, big left hand. With good Spence is trying to sit down on his punches. But when he's chasing a moving target outside of his range, it's hard to sit down. He tees off. He drills Barrera. Spence with a good left. Barrera, 28 and 2. Good jab by Spence, uppercut by Barrera, missed and left. Good left hand by Spence. He's Lined him up, and here he comes. Oh, and it was the body shot that put him down. And here, Spence pours on the onslaught. It's the left right to the body. And the right was the one that set him down. He has hurt Barrera here. Good right hook by Spence. And Barrera. Starting to slide into deep water. Still game with an uppercut. Body shot that dropped Barrera to open that body up again. He's Here got he to go comes. downstairs. And Does you Barrera see Barrera want to shaking stop? his head? No. Lawrence Cole. In Spence's eighth pro bout, he faced a similarly experienced Jesus Tavera for a scheduled eight round fight. He knocked down Tavera two times with powerful body shots and one within the first round. And what do you think about the motivation for him? Any of the boxing fans, they're going to want to check out this card first, so Errol Spence has a chance to kind of stick out in people's minds with a different... Yeah, kind of signs for the uh, fight. That doesn't include a television cruise and only place to be in that ring right now. Yeah. It uh, kind of gives you the idea how fear comes in for guys when they oh, realize they're oh, going oh, Down he goes. For Let's see if he has anything left in him. And Spence wisely continues to work that body wants to continue on that road. Trapping him again, bringing it up top. He's well served to come up top. Is right now Tav Tavera is trying to protect his body. He still hurts her body. And he leaves oh, him wide open up the top. And that's, that's it. Stoppage. This guy's got devastating power. In his bout against Peter Olush, Spence secured another TKO victory. In the fourth and final round, Spence had landed 97 punches as opposed to Olush, who had only landed 25 punches. At just past the first minute of the round, Spence landed a hard right jab and followed up with a huge left hand to the head of Olush, forcing him to take a knee. After taking the count by the referee, Spence went after the Kenyan and landed a short left hook, which put him on the canvas. Wild, because you know, the tendency can be, you want to get crazy with a guy like any, as he doesn't stay wild, he's able to Land those solid shots here and there because he keeps his composure. That was a pretty good shot right there. And now it's got oh, Alouche going backward. Now Alouche is in trouble. And an uppercut. Alouche this time. Four shots in the head. But backs Alouche into a corner again. And there was a great left hand. And it put Alouche right on his back. And Rafael Ramos going to wave it off. It is over. Spence scored a sensational sixth round knockout against Leonard Bundu in 2016. Being the much stronger boxer throughout most of the fight, Spence's knockout victory 
was almost inevitable. On the 9th of November 2012, 22-year-old Spence made his professional debut in California in a scheduled four-round bout against Jonathan Garcia. Spence knocked Garcia down and out in the third round. The fight was stopped a little while after. Good body shot by Spence. And three to the head by Spence in very quick order. And another. There he goes, he's loosening up more. At the beginning, he was a little bit tight, and you can see now he's letting him flow. That's in very quick order. And another. Ow. It'd be interesting to see uh, oh. the connect percentage of Spence in this first round. Two, three good body shots in the left of the head. Uppercut slipped in by Spence on another one with the left hand. Comes right back and Garcia's down. Three, four, five. How you doing? Up but wobbly. Seven. Hey, come here. Better show me something. This fight's over. Right. I don't think he understood it because he's speaking to Spence trying to close the deal here. Left the guy, Pat Ross is going to jump in. That's it. All over. Well stopped again by Pat Russell. Garcia wasn't offering anything. In Spence's bout with Pepina Cuevas, he ended the match within the last few seconds of the opening round with a powerful combo of body shots. By knockout, every single, that tremendous left to the body. In fact, the last terrific first round uh, knockout. <laughs> and there goes Aaron. Go downstairs, the legs go down a little bit long. Damn it. And he's definitely connecting. Uh, very thrifty with the money tonight. Now, you may notice a, a, a lack of uh, screaming ringside. His mom is not here. She's uh, his biggest uh, biggest fan and, and, of course, the loudest fan that he had. Be uh, screaming loudly right now based on the attack in this first round going upstairs. Wow. And that warning was from Pat Russell that Cuevas had better show up something or he's going to stop the fight. Yeah, he better throw some punches and there he goes on his knee. I don't think he's going to make it. He's got to make it. Errol Spence Jr. Securing yet another knockout victory. Spence defeated challenger Carlos Ocampo within the first round after unloading a powerful left-right hook combo to the body, successfully defending his IBF welterweight championship. Attitude of the moment, taking the fight to Spence. Landing some very good Spence has seven first-round knockouts. So far, Carlos Ocampo said he's going to go quietly into the good night. On December 15, 2012, Errol Spence had his second pro fight against Richard Andrews in the sports arena in Los Angeles and finished it in the third by TKO. We expect fireworks in that one, and Spence continues to put on that hard hat and go to work here against Richard Andrews. And if we thought we're all punches, well, he threw 110 in the last round and landed 56. According to show uh, stats, and Andrews threw only 26. He is just throws away, works the body with the left hand, goes upstairs with the right and a left. And referee Thomas Taylor has seen enough. A deluge of leather thrown by Errol Spence Jr. And just like he did in his debut, he records another third-round stoppage win here. His first first-round knockout as a professional was against Nathan Butcher on January 2013. Well, you see, he hydrated all the way up to 163. Two good body shot, a right Stop. to the head, that's it. He falls into the ropes. Had he fallen down, I'm not sure he'd have made it out. We're done. We're done. That's it, over. We're done. We're done. A good thing. Right here. 
Well, it's a W. Okay. Stay right here. I'm not really sure what more you could say. He did everything he needed to do. No, exactly right, Barry. Uh, again, the on May 2013. Errol Spence secured his second professional knockout against Brandon Hoskins in Las Vegas. After that, Guillermo Ibarra was his next opponent and his next first round knockout victim. Fernando Montiel, Travieso Arce. Ay, lo está. Y ahí se fue al suelo, claro, está en frío. Pero hay mucha diferencia de potencia. Vuelve a ir al suelo el boxeador mexicano. Donde ser. En the Illusions Theater, San Antonio. Errol Spence secured one more first round TKO against Raymond Charles. With 24 wins and 10 losses, No Bolano stepped into the ring with Spence Jr. and survived longer than one round. Under a minute. Final seconds here. The wide shots are costing Bolano, so leaving himself wide open. All that started with him. Spence took a head step back and came back in with a 1 2. That's how he heard Bolano's earlier in the round. Oh, good left hand bounce. The first real test as a pro was against Samuel Vargas, who had a record of 20 wins, one loss, and one draw. However, even he couldn't survive all 10 rounds and lost by TKO in the fourth. Again, Spence landing the jabs, nice left. And again, two nice. Taking his time, jabbing. And the right hand, and the left, and the right hand. <laughs> and there it is. Vargas goes to the canvas. Knocked down for Steve Farhood with us, scoring it unofficial. Has been knocked down in this last round, we saw. And Spence oh, trying to bitter. finish it off here. Going nice to the body. And now Derek James has taught him well. Very well. Body shot will be the call for here. You were talking about that. Now he goes up top, and the referee moves in and stops it. That is it. Earl the Truth Spence Jr. finishes off Sam Vargas. On January 2018 in Brooklyn, Barclays Center, the American super lightweight, Lamont Peterson, moved up a division and stepped into the ring with Errol Spence Jr. It would turn out to be the wrong decision, since he would quit on the stool in the seventh. Worked a lot on his defense as well. A nice left uppercut, right hand to the body, and left left hole by Peterson, and a short right hand that caught Spence, and now it's a balance. You know, it's just Spence is the younger guy, more fresh, he's throwing more punches, he's, he's a bigger guy. Oh. And there he dropped on the attack, unloads another left hand, and another left. Peterson staying in the pocket. Plenty of heart on display. And Spence uh, or gap for Watch Spence. Watch him stepping too hard to smother himself. Watch, he's always making sure there's enough space for him to punch. Watch, he moves in. He makes, see it right there. He, guys, so many guys can all facets of Lamont Peterson's anatomy. Come on, go. Yeah, I want to call. He's yeah. running on the
Ronald Cruz had a record of 20 wins and 3 losses, and would add one more loss when he fought with Errol Spence in June 2014. It's really see, look, look at him, he sits down on his back, he bends his legs, and he really does that. A very subtle lateral movement by Spence. He's really keeping this. <laughs> oh. to Spence Jr. In his Olympics debut in 2012, Spence fought against Mike Carvalho for three rounds and successfully won on points. Yeah, I've, I've heard a lot about this Spence. Um, Dallas and Texas. He did a couple of times before, no moving score. The top left hand corner, but that's a three time Olympian from Brazil. Mike Ribeiro de Cavallo. Ribeiro there, Jimmy. Two shots may well have leveled things up. Set the rhythm of um, Errol Spence. Spence's ambition seems to emulate his uh, last run. I don't think the Brazilian has done enough for to overcome this gap. Blue corner representing the United States of America, Errol Spence. 